Hello, 7th graders, and welcome to 5.3. Today we'll be discussing slopes and rate of change. And what you want to be able to do is determine the slope of a line and recognize constant and variable rates of change. Constant would just meaning um, it, it stays the same, and variable meaning it, it's changing. Okay, so first we'll start off with a little bit of vocab. And I'll add in a few additional things that I think can help you with explaining slope. Slope is a measure of the steepness of a line. Um, and, and really at its core, that's all it is. That's how steep a line is. It's And then... Uh, another way to think about a slope is the um, ratio of rise to run. A lot of people will say uh, slope, this is the way I remember that, is rise over run. So what's the change in how many up and down it goes versus uh, left and right that it goes? When I think about slope and steepness, I think about my great grandma's uh, steps in her house. It was an old, big old brick farmhouse. And the steps in her house were like this steep. Yeah, that, this would be an example of a steep slope, right? There, when you, there's not much room for error when you're going up or going down these steps. Whereas nowadays, in more modern builds, um, <clears throat> the, st the steepness of stairs is a lot more gradual. So um, you'll see that like a line for this would be something like this, where it's a little bit easier to walk up and down versus in some of those old farmhouses, though they had some really steep stairs. Okay, You could also think about slope as um, like in construction when you're working on a roof. There are some roofs that have an extremely, um, extremely hard pitch on it, meaning that it's hard to walk up here. Okay, if you're a construction worker and you um, have your hammer and you're trying to do shingles on a roof like that, uh, that's not really easy to stay on. What it is good for having a steep pitch on your roof is that snow comes off pretty easy. Whereas if you had a roof that looked like this, okay, it's going to be a lot easier to, to walk on because the it's not so steep, but snow is going to be able to stick on here a lot easier. So that's something that construction workers will often think about um, when, you, when building. I'm sure you've seen like when we've had heavy snowfall in the year, some sheds go down. A lot of sheds don't have a very steep pitch on their roofs and so a lot of snow tends to sit on them and sometimes it gets too heavy and they collapse so that's those are some things i'm i'm thinking about when i think of slope and lastly the rate of change is the ratio of two quantities that change and I'll, I'll kind of explain that more in an example. It's a little bit easier to see. Okay. The last piece of information I want to share with you uh, that is helpful to know is um, I'm going to make a small drawing here called Mr. Slope Guy. All right. Here's Mr. Slope Guy's head. Remember now I'm not an artist. I'm not an art teacher. That's... A weakness of mine, I think. Um, if you have a line that goes from left to right and it goes upward, from left to right and your line is going upward, you have a positive slope. Make that a little bit more clear. Positive slope. If you have a line that goes downward from left to right, you have a negative slope. 
If you have a line that goes straight up and down, you have an undefined slope. See this U? That stands for undefined, and that's a line going straight up and down. Or if you have a line that goes straight across, you have a slope of zero. And I'm going to use those for his cheek. So you can kind of see this looks like um, uh, a guy, a face, right? And the way I use it is to remember a positive slope. Left to right is trending upward. From left to right, going downward is a negative slope. Straight up and down line is undefined. And lastly, a line that's from left to right straight across has a slope of zero. All right, one way you could think of that is if you have a, a flat um, roof, right? Say like skyscrapers or, or even a school. If you were to set a ball on there, your ball wouldn't roll to the left or to the right. Hopefully it's nice and even, but you don't have any slope. If you had a slope on a, um, a house, say for example, and you set a ball here, it would roll down. Okay, you, you can tell you have a slope there. So um, use this Mr. Slope guy once in a while if it helps to remember um, <clears throat> positive, negative, undefined, or zero slopes. All right, moving on to our first example here. Um, it says, tell whether the slope is positive or negative, and then find the slope. All right, so here is our graph. And uh, first, it tells whether it's positive or negative. Okay, remember, from left to right, is our line going up or is it going down? Well, from left to right, our line is going up. So we have a positive slope. If you want to abbreviate, I'm fine with that. Okay. The line, in other words, the line points upward. So the slope is positive. Okay. Then find the slope. Well, remember from the definition, slope is rise over run. In other words, how many up or down do you go? Over, slope is a fraction. Run, how many uh left or right do you go from one point to the next okay <clears throat> i like i'll start at a and i'll go to b but i'll show you that you can start at b and go to a if you want to it doesn't matter remember we're trying to find the slope which is essentially how steep is this line if i start at a and i'm trying to go to b I need to see how many up or down do I go and how many left or right do I go. Starting here, at this point, I have to go up one, two, three. So I go up three and I go right one, two, three. So my rise is three, my run is three, three divided by three, is, oops, that looks like negative, is 1. The slope of this line is 1. That means for every time I go up 1, I go to the right 1. Up 1, right 1. And you'll see I'm still on the line. Up 1, right 1. I'm still on the line. Up 1, right 1. Still on. That creates this line. Okay? Now, some of you are saying, well, that's great, Mr. Gills, but how did you know to go start at A and go to B? Well, you can start at B and go to A. It doesn't matter. Let me show you. If I started at B here and I'm trying to get to A, <clears throat> I could say I'm going to go down one, two, three. And going down three is negative three. Anytime we go down, it's negative. Over my run, I'm going left. Oh, remember, look at your number line. Anytime you go left, it's also negative one, two, three. Three to the left would be negative three. Remember from our integer rules, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and three divided by three is one. I got the same exact thing here. Down one, over one, and I'm on the line. 
down one, over one, and I'm on line. Okay, so you'll see it doesn't matter which direction that you choose to go. All right, let's flip to uh, the next example here. It says use the slope negative two over one and the point one comma negative one to graph the line. All right, so what I like to do then is, so re re my rise is negative two. Oops, let me get my sketch pad. When it's negative, remember that means uh, go down. I'll keep it orange here. Negative two over one. Or <clears throat> remember from our integer rules, that's the same as two negative one. You can apply the negative sign to either one of those. It doesn't matter. You can't apply it to both. If you apply it a negative here, that would be a negative divided by negative is actually a positive, and that would change our slope. So big no-no there. Apply it to either the top or the bottom, and then start at the point one negative one. So one negative one would be right one, down one. Remember this is our x and this is our y, <clears throat> and then we need to use the slope to emit, to graph a line. Okay, so from the point one, negative one, where we start, move uh, how many units down? Well, uh, two units down because it's negative and one unit to the right. Or if you look at it this way, you move two units up and uh, one unit left. It doesn't matter which one you choose. I'll start with this one first. So starting at my point, one, negative one, I'll move two down, one, two, and one to the right, one. And I'll do that again. Two down, one, two, and one to the right. You can see I'm starting to form a line. Or the same thing, if I applied my negative sign, would be moving two units up, so up two, and left one, left one right here. Up two, one, two, left one, mark that point. Up two, one, two, left one, mark that point. Okay, and then the last step, all you need to do is draw a line through those points. Now, if you have a ruler, that would be helpful. It's kind of tough on my sketch pen to do. But there's, there's my line, okay? <clears throat> Lastly, we'll end with uh, example number three. Actually, there's four examples, and then check it out. Okay, example three asks um, kind of more about <clears throat> what the line is doing. We don't necessarily have to graph anything. It says, tell whether the graph shows a constant or a variable rate of change. Constant, remember, means it stays the same. Anytime you have a constant uh, a constant rate of change, it's going to be a straight line. So right away, just by looking at this, is this a straight line? Uh, definitely not. It's, it's not a line. You can't take um, one, you can't like take your pencil, lay it down and have it connect <clears throat> all the dots here. You can see that it's changing, it's going up and down. Okay, so the rate of change would just be variable, would be our answer. All right, in the previous example, you know, where that, the one that we just graphed, where it looked like this, this would be a constant rate of change because every time we went down two over one, down two over one, or up two left one, up two left one. So in the previous one, in example two, that was a constant rate of change. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to example four, it says the graph shows the distance a monarch butterfly travels over time. Tell whether uh, the graph shows a constant or variable rate of change and then find how fast the butterfly is traveling. All right, so if you look at the graph here, it looks like a straight line. So we can say that it's traveling at a constant 
rate of speed. It looks to me for every one hour, it goes 20 miles. So in two hours, we'd expect that it could go 40. Yes, it does. Three hours, add another 20, 60. Yep, it looks like it's pretty constant to me. So the amount of uh, distance that it goes is the rise and the amount of time it goes is the run. Here, remember, run is left to right. That's our time. And our run is our distance or our up and down. You can find the speed by finding the slope of this line. Okay. Remember, slope is rise over run. Okay. Again, rise over run. So how many up and down do I go versus how many left to right do I go? If I start here and I go from this point to this point, my uh, starting point of zero to my first point, my rise, I go up 20 and over one, one hour, okay? Let's see, is that the same when I go to my next point on my line? I go up from 20 to 40, we'd be going up 20 and over my run would be one, from one to two is one. You could calculate that differently. You could say from uh, this starting point, let's say this one was marked for us and this one was marked for us. You could say, okay, uh, from this point to this point, I go up 20, 40, and I go over one, two hours. Well, if you simplify this, divide each of these by two, you get 20 and one, the same is what we came up with here. So the butterfly travels at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Okay, um, go ahead and pause the video next and try the last problem, the check it out, see what you come up with, and then come back to check. All right, we have tell whether the slope is positive or negative and then find the slope. All right, Mr. Slope Guide, if you need to look at him, but going from left to right, my line is going down. So I have a negative slope and then find the slope. Okay, rise over run. I can start here, I can start here. It doesn't matter. I'll start here. I wanna go from one point to the next. Okay, I'm gonna go over one, Two, okay, if I go over, remember, that's my run. So I went to the right two, that'd be positive two. And I went down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And down eight would be negative eight. Okay, so negative eight divided by two would give me negative four for my slope. And I'll just do that the other way just to, to, to show you that it can work going the other way as well, too. My eraser here. If I started at the bottom point and I'm trying to get to my top point, or you could even do this going to another point on the graph. Let's say I see that my line intersects right here. I want to see from this point to this point what my slope is. Well, okay, starting here, I'd have to go left one. So that would be my run, uh, which is negative one. And up one, two, three, four. Well, what's four divided by negative one? Negative four, same as what I got before, All right? Lots of different ways that you can go about solving these. Right, you see that it just intersects at a really nice spot there, so that's why I chose that. But again, you don't have to do that. You could, it's kind of nice because it's flexible here on how to find slope. But regardless, your slope is going to be the same. This line slope is always going to be negative four. All right, my phone's ringing, that's all I've got today. I will see you guys next time.